What is going on, managers? And welcome back to another tactical video from me. Today, we are looking at Massimiliano Allegri, the Juventus giant. It was there since 2014 and was doing a fantastic job of winning many Serie A's. So I'm going to have a look at his tactic that he was using to win said Serie A's and see if it can work in football managers. So without messing around, let's get straight into the video. As you can see there, we are top of the league. This tactic actually won us the league. And what Allegri kind of did is he took over in 2014 like we said in the intro and what happened he kind of adapted the five at the back and then kind of made the tactic himself changing it into a kind of four two three one essentially from the involvement of the five at the back into that so he kind of changed the cliche of defensive five at the back formations in Italy and went for your traditional 4-2-3-1 which kind of happened in the 2000s the one up top kind of became the in thing of football then so he kind of went with the rhythm as you see we've had Jose Mourinho's tactics of 4-2-3-1 as well and many other fantastic managers all going for that one up top and that's exactly what Allegri did as you can see we won the Serie A right there we won it by one point we sneaked it at the end only losing seven games a whole of the season which is pretty good and we also got Felovic uh, 32 goals the whole season managed to get top goal scorer of us and Brenner as well the defender managed to get the most rating as 7.41 and also you can see over there Leonardo Paredes gets his 11 assists just four around the top two assists of the league so it's actually quite a good tactic it's working quite well if you can see here we managed to score 89 goals and only conceded 39 as well so we had a goal difference of 50 the best in the league goal difference and if we come over year as well we were the best in the league for scoring goals we were the fifth best with conceding them with 39 so that obviously counts up and adds up to things as well so not really the the worst as it comes to conceding goals as we were the fifth best but we were the best in scoring goals so it also helps out massively that we scored them goals 50 goals more than what we have conceded so brilliant stuff there only managing 76 yellow cards as well which is very decent for the italian football there's normally a lot of yellow cards and a lot of heavy fouls going on in the Serie A. so it's nice to see that only got two yellow cards as well that's brilliant stuff for us and we're just going to go through a couple of the statistics of the league to show you how we were doing and how this tactic was doing all together so as you can see yeah we were the most goals there and we actually did it really well scoring 17 more goals than any other team as well fewer shots we were actually quite down there as you can see we were finished ninth for fewer shots 381 though only 90 off the leaders so not too bad and considering we were fifth on goals conceded we weren't actually allowing the shots to go in the back of the net it was just the fewest shots again so we were more of going from a long range shot than more than anything and just blocking off the defenders in our area to allow them just to have these crazy long shots. Possession, we were the second best in the league and we managed to get 59%. Joint third with Verona, very strong from Verona, very high up as well with their percentage considering they're inside. Normally mid-table-ish fighting allegation, but also Inter gainers by 1%. That is uh, a little bit of a... Oh, a little dig into there but fair play we managed to still maintain 59 percent possession which is very strong in the league we also finished third joint third with ac milan on the most clean sheets which is very good as well atalanta and lazio gained 21 and 19 another good strong statistic to have into the season as well and another reason why it helped us win the league as well them key keeping clean sheets when we need to are crucial in any any tactic that you want to be building a steady pass completion of 88 percent as well really strong finishing seventh in the league some big teams up there but considering we were only three percent off the rest of them and verona up there as well with 91 like i say with their most possession as well as pass completion verona had a very strong season keeping the ball on that but we did really good there 88 percent on the pass completion very strong statistic as well and i like that for us also being up there with the most shots 564 just 90 off AC Milan as well up there so another key instrument to show you that we are getting shots off as well and gaining them the positions that we need to be to allow us to have these shots that's why we were top goal scorers because we were creating these chances we were just a little bit more clinical than said AC Milan and people around us so very very good stats there cross completion as well was 22 percent the best in the league and that's actually quite interesting to see because we do play with two kind of inverted wingers inside forward so it's interesting to see that the cross is going to 
across the box and gain to each side of them as well. And when you've got Halovic in the centre as there, he's going to win a lot of crosses. So that pass completion is going to go high as well because Halovic is absolutely fantastic in the air and just getting in the right position to put the ball in from them crosses. So great to see that as well. And with the crosses completed, we got 227. So we had 22% of our completion and we got 271 just shy of AC Milan by 59 there. We came fifth on our final third touches as well. What that means is we are getting the ball and we are being a little bit patient with it in the final third. That just means that we are trying to get the ball down, find the right gaps, waiting for the shots, and it has actually paid off as well. Seems as though we are top of the most goals scored and also second with the most shots and goal. It just shows that being that little bit more patient actually works really well for us. It introduces this kind of style of football of slowly down attacking whilst being not aggressive, but very strong on the defensive structure as well. And as we go into the defensive structure of the team as well, I'm going to show you a few attributes here, or a few stats here that you can see there. Like, say, fifth joint, as in uh, goals conceded. Very strong from us. Only seven off Lazio as well, so it's a very strong season for us. With our closing down as well, passes attempt was the least of any team as there, having 17,000. That just means we're closing the ball down, gaining it off them before they can put the pass on and just applying a little bit of pressure to get them to make the mistakes there. And also with that attempted one comes the pass completion. So we've managed to keep it down to 15,000 passes the whole season attempted against as well. And that was actually completed against us. So it's nice to see that we are top of there, closing the opposition down. And then our opposition passes per defensive action was 4.31, second best in the league. So that means we're really up there and not allowing them to get the ball and try and play it out of the defense as well. We're just really closing it down and they're probably going long and that's probably where they gain most of the shots from is going behind our defenders and getting that long ball and getting the shots off that way. We are not allowing them to play the style of football they want to. We're forcing them to play a different style of football and that is what I like and that's why this tactic works really well. If we look at some of the XG as well, as you can see there, 2.34 goals per game with an expected goal. So we're, we're achieving above average of the expected goals there. Conceding 1.03 so as you can see there we're kind of swinging in the roundabouts of 1.3 per game goals more than we are conceding so if you count them two together you're always going to win more games than you're going to lose some the expected goals against was 0 at uh, 1.16, which is not too bad. Shots per game was 14, way above average of the league with our shots on target ratio completely above the league as well with 43%. As you can see, our pass completion, we were up there as one of the highest. I think was, we were fifth with that. Really good to see. Tackles one is a little bit down, which I don't like to see because I like to have a high tackle ratio to be winning the ball back and try and get it back. But when we're putting pressure on them to hoof the ball, it kind of counteracts the fact that we don't really need to tackle because we're kind of forcing mistakes upon as you can see with the pass map as well this was against inter milan as you can see there you can kind of see the style of football that we we're playing and what we were actually playing as well it was a 4-2-3-1 as you can see the ball gets played down to our defenders and we let them do the work a lot of passing movement into the wing back into the center mid and moving it to the inverted wingers or inside forwards brilliant play down here and just keeps it a little bit wise allows our midfielders to kind of be a little bit freedom and then our striker and our am to do whatever they want freely as they're going to try and push up and try and get the ball into the back of the net brilliant pass completion map and this is over as well if i show you here this is over a cheeky 4-0 win against inter milan away from home dominated them possession pass completion was good as well 3.15 xg 20 shots with nine on target compared to their eight with one on target i'm going to show you the goals as well just so you can see exactly what is going on and now we're actually scoring the goals this one with di maria over the top a great ball across as well and back stick there is fagiola getting a goal for his next one is going to be a corner coming in from post and there is Brennan that's why he's been getting more and more high rated valuations there's two free kicks go in but McKenna gets the ball through Halovic gets it through plays it out to the wing backs as well Quadrado gets another ball through and I was talking about Havelic getting into the right positions finding the right passes and moving around brilliantly does it as well fantastic play and a nice goal build up play from us there as once again we get the ball inside four again involved as we bring it through to the AM a lovely pass through and Halovic just gets another ball plays it through for the goalkeeper easy win and that is just easy stuff for us we maintain the possession we didn't let them have an attack we didn't let them have shots neither if we did there were long range ones that just stopped them from playing and it was brilliant to see so you're going to be asking me well what's the tactic well this is the tactic guys so as you can see here it is a four two three 
squad. And Allegri kind of built his team around his two sets of midfielders, which you would have Pajanic and Kadira. Now, they were two double pivots there. And what they were, they were so good on the ball, he allowed them to be playmakers. And what that was is, we've got Locatelli and we've got Paredes. So what I thought they would do is, want to be a little bit more attacking, which would be Pajanic in my eyes. And then the other one would sit back a little bit more, which would be Kadira. And that just allowed them to push up and maintain a balance there because they weren't a high pressing team. They didn't press much. They really didn't. They kind of let the attackers press them because when they went into a defensive structure, they kind of flowed into a 4-4-2. So what it did is it locked it down and it would allow pressure to be pushed by your inverted wingers and your shadow striker and your DLF to let them go forward. But these would sit back here. And as the DLF, it sits back and becomes this kind of formation right now that allows them to steady the ship and block where they need to do, doesn't create gaps, doesn't allow anyone to get out of position because these guys have been doing the press and these guys all lock in to be that structured defense. With that, I had the guys to press a little bit more. As you can see here, uh, Fagnola, who would have been die ball back then, just your standard number, number 10, absolutely perfect there, but we have got him closed down a little bit more. I do have Quadrado closed down and tackle harder. Also, Kostic has closed down more, and then Halovic has a little bit of closed down more. I want them to press. They are the pressers of the team, but then the other guys just hold the position and just sit back and mop that up. We don't want to do anything silly at all. So with Halovic dropping back, he would play in that Higuain position there. Also, what that would allow when we are defending as well, is this allows him to drop back and create gaps to a allowing the passing movement as well, which you saw the two goals against Inter Milan. He was able to find the gaps because he's dropping a little bit deeper that just draws the opposition's defensive line out a little bit further to allow runs behind the back of them or even spaces on the half circle around that kind of area to allow anyone with a passing ability, such as Locatelli or Paredes. Paredes got most assists for this team. Gets the ball through to him, can find it, and allows us to put the ball into the back of the net. It works so well because when they are defending, they are defending structurally, and they can just push around when they need to with the attackers, which also then creates gaps for us to find the ball when we do win possession back of the ball. We do have two normal wing backs on support as well. They get forward whenever physically possible, but they don't really need to go too far forward because we've got a lot of players already up there pushing in, pushing forward, and getting the ball into the box. They kind of structurally defend with the center mid uh, center mid rolls there but when they need to come back they're all the way back as well so they are really easy to do also you will see i have Benucci as the ball playing defender while back in the day it would have been Cialini then one of the best defenders that has been in italian football i know there's been a lot more but you kind of you kind of not miss Cellini. He was absolutely fantastic. So Cellini would bring that ball out of play, push up a little bit, allow to dribble with it as he does have two potential playmakers and the two pivots to the centre mids to allow him to pass the ball out there as well. And also dropping back would be another defender behind the back of him as well. So there is so much room for them to move with the ball as well as being structurally developed to get the ball back when they needed to. And if there was a mistake, there's enough players covering back to get the ball as well. So it really hand in hand attack and defense kind of work together and lock together to become this very strong formation we do play attacking football that's the style of football that he did play in the Serie A and that's why he won so many games it is an attacking football but we just don't press as much so everyone thinks like oh you don't press it's not attacking it actually is when you you don't have to press to be attacking so how did we bring up well we'd have the overlap on the left and right midfielders the overlap just holds the ball up it doesn't mean that they're going to run all the way around them both sides it just holds the ball up to allow them to get forward to give the op did the player sorry an option to pass the ball if needs to be but with the Danilio and Al Alexandro, you can get up and down with their stamina. So it was perfectly fine to put the overlap on there. And we also have play out of defense as well because they like to play short to Cialini who can move with the ball and bring it up into the field to allow them to have more expressiveness with the ball. We did play short passing, but we played it a little bit of a higher tempo just to get that ball moving a little bit hot and try and misplace the pass from the opposition to create the gaps and move the ball around nicely. Then 
when we go into transition, we actually regroup when we call transition, and that is where we become that 4-4-2. With regrouping, drop back when we lose position, we set ourselves, we set our position, and we just lock ourselves into it to try and stop them from getting through as quickly as possible. And in that 4-4-2, when we get the ball back, we then go into a counter, which is a Halich, where he'll be out of position, but in a good play, because he's dragged the players out as well. That he can create that diving move, that diagonal run, or that pass across to then find an inverted winger or an inside forward. There is options there for them, and we do roll it out and distribute to the centre halves. That is how they played football back then. And the only thing that we have here is just a high press. So we're just a little bit further up the field there. Nothing special, nothing drastic as well. Just a further bit up the field with a high press. It doesn't mean they're going to be pressing. It's just the further up the field for the first line of engagement. It doesn't mean they're chasing them down like headless chickens. It's just we're further up the field a little bit with a standard defensive line. That gap is not too much from the center off or defensive to the center mid. That is not there. Also, you do have Benucci running up into that gap as well, or Cellini back in the day to kind of close that gap, if you understand what I mean there. And that is how simple this one is is as well other things i have on instructions would be to tackle order on my wing backs as well like and also mark tightly on my center offs that is pretty much all i have on the instruction that guys is pretty much the tactic in a nutshell massimiliano allegri this has been his tactic. This is what he dominated the Serie A with. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, make sure you download it. Give it a wheel. Try it out. See if it is. I think better plays could potentially cause this tactic to be a little bit more better. I just think there's a little bit lacking in this squad for me to run this one. We did win the league, but Champions League and stuff like that, we were a little bit worse for wear. Knocked out last 16 against Chelsea and in the third round against Sassuolo. So the league was the only victory that we got here. But I think with better plays in this side, you could really get a monster side with this one guys but guys thank you very much for watching this video it means absolute world to me if you want to check out more content i'm live over at twitch www.twitch.tv for slash ticker 147 you'll see football manager content galore over there we are currently doing a tier 8 english save all the way to the premiership so don't miss that one and guys if you have liked the video make sure you hit the like make sure you hit the subscribe it helps me out massively you guys are absolutely smashing it and it means the world to me i did have a little bit of break had a little bit on but i won't go into detail on that that's all over on the live stream. Guys, you've been absolutely awesome. Thank you very much for clicking on this video. Taking a little part of your day, checking out my content. It means the world to me. I'll catch you all next time. Much love and bye-bye.